Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the New York City Council's first virtual stated meeting. At this time, please place all electronic devices to vibrate and turn on your video. Please check to see that your microphone is on, is on mute. Thank you for your cooperation. I now turn it over to Majority Leader Lori Cumbo. Good afternoon and welcome to the stated meeting of April 22nd, 2020. I am Lori Cumbo and it is my pleasure to welcome you to the City Council's first virtual stated meeting. If you would like to follow along, the agenda for today's meeting is posted on our website. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Is Adams. Oh, okay. Present. Ampri Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Barron. Present and blessed. Borelli. Blessed and present. <laughs> Brannon. Present. Cabrera. Present. Chin. Present. Cohen. Here. Constantinides. Blessed and present. Carnegie. Blessed, present, and highly favored. <laughs> Deutsch. Present. Diaz. Present. Drum. Here. Eugene. Present. Gibson. Blessed and highly favored. I'm here. Jonai. Here. Gradenchik. Also blessed and most definitely here. Holden. Here. Kalos. Here. King. Present and blessings to us all. Ku. Present. Kozowitz. Here. Lanceman. Present. Lander. Grateful. Levin. Here. Levine. Very happy to be present. Lewis. Blessed and here. Mizell. Here. Menchaca. Presente. Not allowed to eat in chambers. Miller. Chambers where? Present. Moya. Present. Perkins. Uh, present. Powers. All right, nice to see everybody. I am present. Reynoso. Present. Peace. Richards. Miss Oyal, present. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. En nombre de todos los Latinos, Afroamericanos y Asiáticos que han muerto, presente. Rose. Blessed and present. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Present. Torres. Present. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. I am present and on time here. Valone. Here. Van Bramer. Being very grateful to be here with all of you. I am present. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. I'm here. Combo. Present. Speaker Johnson. I'm here and I'm happy to see all my colleagues. Very, very happy to see you all. We have a quorum. Thank you. We will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Rabbi Sharon Kleinbaum of Beit Shushat Torah, located at 130 West 30th Street in Manhattan. 
Thank you so much. And I'm honored to be here with all of you to offer these words as you begin your work on behalf of this great city. And we're so grateful to all of you for stepping forward and doing the work of our city. May the one who has blessed all of our ancestors in all of our lands and in all of our histories bless all of us here today. We stand on the shoulders, each one of us, of those who have come before us, who have lived through times even worse than the ones we are in right now and have blessed us with our lives to remember them, to bring their strength and to their, bring their vision to create a world for those who will come after us as we have come after them. Bless those healthcare workers in our city who every day take their lives into their hands as they save lives. Bless those essential workers and those on the streets of our city keeping it clean and safe and delivering food and essential services so that all of us may live. Bless all those who are working to bring dig dignity to the dead. Our city now counts over 10,000 dead from this virus. We pray for the immigrants, the refugees, the asylum seekers, those who are teachers and parents and grandparents, those who are in our homeless shelters and those who are in our homes and on our streets. We pray for everyone today. And we pray for those of you who represent this city to continue doing the work of government to make things better for all of us, to bring to us a vision of what it could be when we gather together with intention for the good and for the health of all. Please, all of us, those of various faiths and those of no faith, we join together to bring our intentions and to bring our talents, to bring our vision and to bring our humanity to create and a city on which we will build into a future. We use technology to gather together today, but knowing that the one who has made all of us is present wherever each of us is right now. We pray that though we are physically distant, we are spiritually connected, and we pray we will use whatever tools necessary to build up toward the future. We say these words of the Jewish prayer, which expresses gratitude for living to this moment. We thank the one above, the one who has created our souls, the one who is in our hearts for the honor, the privilege to be alive at this moment, to use the work of our hands and our hearts for the good of all humanity. And let us say, Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Rabbi Kleinbaum, for that powerful and timely and important prayer that our city needs so much right now. I'd now like to ask Speaker Johnson to spread the invocation on the record. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. And I want to thank uh, my friend, who I'm so happy to see uh, on the screen, Rabbi Sharon Kleinbaum, uh, who serves as a spiritual leader of Congregation Bet Simcha Torah. She was installed as CBST's first rabbi in 1992, arriving at the height of the AIDS crisis. She guided the congregation through a period of tremendous loss and also tremendous change, while addressing social issues of the day and building a strong and deeply spiritual community. Under her leadership, the congregation has become a powerful voice in the movement for equality and justice for all people of all sexual orientations, gender identities, and expressions. I have personally worked closely with Rabbi Kleinbaum, who is a source of inspiration to so many in our community, and she is a source of inspiration to me personally. Her temple is in my council district on West 30th Street. I have been there many times for Friday night services, and I particularly have enjoyed their Pride Shabbat the last couple of years. I have fond memories of not that long ago surprising Rabbi Kleinbaum with a proclamation for her 60th birthday. Uh, Rabbi, again, I want to thank you for everything you do and for being with us today as part of this special stated meeting. I also want to thank you for your work serving New Yorkers in your community during this coronavirus crisis. Uh, we are deeply, deeply grateful for you and everything you do for our city, but especially the importance of your voice and of your spirituality and of your guidance 
during these painful weeks we have just lived through. So I wanna thank you for your friendship and for being a wonderful New Yorker. And Madam Majority Leader, with that, I make a motion to spread the invocation in full upon the record. Thank you so much, Speaker Johnson. I will now recognize you again so that you can provide an overview of today's very historical meeting. Uh, thank you again, Madam Majority Leader. And uh, this is not my speaker time. This is just uh, an overview to give the council members and also the folks that are watching an understanding of what we're gonna be doing today. I wanna welcome everyone to the New York City Council Stated Meeting for April 22nd, 2020. This is a stated unlike anything, unlike any we've ever had before. And I think it's fair to say that this crisis is unlike anything we've faced in modern history. New York City is the epicenter of the coronavirus pandemic in the United States of America. And as of yesterday, our city has had 134,874 confirmed cases of COVID-19. We have also lost 14,000 427 New Yorkers to this terrible disease. And I don't want to get lost in numbers. Each one of those losses is a personal story, a family that has lost, that has lost someone, lives that have been altered by this terrible virus. It is a death toll that defies the imagination and includes many frontline workers and public servants who have died in service to our great city. As New Yorkers, we have faced adversity many times before. Hurricane Sandy, September 11th, the Great Recession, the fiscal crisis of the 1970s. But none of those tragic experiences were quite like this. But although this crisis is unprecedented, we will get through this the same way we got through other hard times. We will look out for one another, we will fight to protect the most vulnerable, and we will work together to benefit the common good for the city that we love. We know that the days and months ahead will not be easy, but this city council is committed to doing everything we can to help New York City recover. Today, we are voting on several important and affordable housing items that are crucial to our city. And we are also introducing a COVID relief package that includes bills to extend time for tenants to repay rent and debts, as well as new protections from harassment for commercial and residential tenants. And we're introducing a plan to reopen our streets to pedestrians so they can practice safe social distancing while getting fresh air and exercise that people need to stay healthy. This relief package also includes a New York City Essential Workers Bill of Rights that requires premiums for non-salaried essential employees at large companies, prohibitions on the firing of essential workers without just cause, and paid sick leave for gig workers. I know that we are anxious to get started, but before we begin, I want to explain how we were able to meet today and to provide everyone with a roadmap on the steps we are taking in today's meetings. We are able to meet virtually today because of Governor Cuomo's emergency order 202.1, which suspended certain portions of the public officer's law. This had the effect of allowing for public bodies like the New York City Council to meet virtually. We were also able to meet pursuant to the mayor's executive order 100, which suspended section 42 of the New York City Charter to the extent it requires the city council to hold meetings as provided by its rules and requires us to have two stated meetings per month. This means that we do not need to follow our council rules regulating stated meetings, including the in-person voting requirement. Based on those executive orders, we are gonna move forward with today's meeting and we will be following all of our rules except for rule 8.40A requiring in-person voting. Here is what will happen. First, we'll vote on a motion from council member Karen Kozlowitz, the chair of our rules committee that allows for the suspension of city council rules that would otherwise prevent us from conducting our regular business virtually. After we vote on that motion, we will take a recess from this stated meeting. Then I will suspend the rule requiring in-person votes for committees. 
And we will then have a meeting of the Committee of the Whole. That is a committee made up of all of the members of the City Council. The reason why we are convening the Committee on the Whole is to enable the Council to seamlessly pass laws and resolutions out of committee and still vote on them today, the ones we'll be voting on today. After that committee meets, we will then reconvene the stated meeting and consider the items that pass the committee of the whole, along with other items that were already passed through committees prior to the coronavirus hitting New York City. For all of these steps, we will stay in the same Zoom conference. So the Zoom conference that you're in right now or that you're watching right now is the same Zoom conference where all of this will occur. With that, I turn the floor back to you, Madam Majority Leader Cumbo. Thank you, Speaker Corey Johnson. At this time, I would now like to recognize Council Member Koslowitz, the Chair of our Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Elections. Thank you very much. I move to suspend the rules of the Council pursuant to Rule 10.20 in relation to certain emergency measures to respond to the public health risk posed by the coronavirus. The suspension and this amendment to the rules of the council would only last for the duration of the declared coronavirus emergency by the governor of New York State or the mayor of New York City pursuant to New York executive law. Since I have not provided one week notice for this motion, unanimous consent is required. I move to suspend the following rules of the council. Rule 2.30, committee of the whole to the extent it requires physically posting a hard copy notice in city hall. Rule 5.10, public access to the extent it requires that a complete transcript of each committee meeting be available for in-person public inspection at the office of the city clerk. Rule 6.00, preparation and presentation of papers to the extent it can be read as requiring that all papers other than committee reports must be deposited in person with the office of the speaker before 1 p.m. at least three business days excluding municipal holidays preceding the meeting day. Papers referred to committee, change of reference, to the extent it only allows the speaker to change the committee assignment of the local law or resolution up until the first meeting of any such committee. Rule 7.50, meetings subsection B, to the extent it prohibits a committee from meeting on the day of the stated or special meeting of the council, unless the item to be considered by such committee will, out of necessity, be proposed as a general order for that day, or such committee meeting is called with the consent of two thirds of the members of such committee. Subsection C, to the extent it requires certain standing committee committees to meet once a month or once every two months. Rule 7.70, required voting subsection to the extent it requires that all committee votes must be cast in person. Rule 7. Point Council Member Kozlowitz, which, which subsection of Rule 7.70? Subsection A. Great, you can continue. Okay. Rule 7.130, discharge of committee to the extent it would prohibit a change of reference of a committee assignment pursuant to rule 6.30. Rule 8.40 voting subsection A to the extent it requires that all votes cast at stated charter and special meetings of the council must be in person. Rule 11.60 discharge of committee subsection A 
to the extent it prohibits the council from acting on a matter referred to the land use committee or its subcommittees pursuant to section 11.20 until the committee has reported thereon or the expiration of the time limit for consideration of that matter. In addition, my motion would allow the speaker to suspend any other rule of the council that would prevent the council and its committees from conducting their regular business remotely, as long as that suspension is consistent with federal, state, and local law. To do so, the speaker would need to publish the rules being suspended on the council website. Thank you, Council Member Koslowitz, for your important work. Would any council members at this time like to debate this motion? If you would like to speak, please raise your hand using the feature in Zoom. Madam Majority Leader, Council Member Menchaca has raised his hand. Thank you, Council Member Menchaca. If you would like to speak, please wait before you begin your remarks for our Sergeant at Arms to announce he has begun the countdown clock. The Sergeant at Arms will alert you when your time expires. Council member, your two minutes is starting now. Thank you. Uh, thank you to the speaker, the staff, and our majority leader, Combo. Um, I just have one question. After listening to uh, Council member Kozowitz's review of the changes. Can I just get a sense of comparison to what we're voting on today to an earlier version of a systems change proposed by uh, by you, Councilmember Kozowitz, back in early March? Are there any differences with that and this one? And whoever wants to answer that question would be great. Lance Pallavi. I'd be happy to answer that question, Councilmember Menchaca. The difference between the motion that Councilmember Kozlowitz distributed to members in March and the one that she has just proposed is that the one in March did not uh, lay out each of the rules that would be suspended. The motion that she has made today that requires unanimous consent lists all of the, the uh, provisions of the council rules that would be suspended. Thanks. Lori, I'm sorry, Madam Majority Leader. Are there any other members that wish to speak at this time? Okay, as required by rule 10.20, I ask for unanimous consent to adopt council member Koslowitz motion to suspend- Madam Majority Leader. Yes. Council member Yeager has raised his hand. My apologies. Council member Yeager, please. Council member Yeager, your two minutes is starting now. Thank you, Madam President. Um, as I just want to uh, reflect uh, in addition to what the parliamentarian spoke uh, and uh, to Madam Chair Kostelitz's, uh remarks earlier, uh, and specifically in reference to uh, my colleague, Councilman Chaka's question, the, uh, uh, a month ago, the, the resolution that was proposed would have uh, enabled the speaker to suspend any rule of the council and uh, council to the council has worked very hard uh, together with the speaker to and, the, and chair Kostelitz to limit the suspension only to such uh, portions of our rules as would uh, inhibit our ability to conduct these meetings online and to no other matter at all. So it's, it's, a, it's a simple uh, listing of those rules that uh, would have otherwise uh, prohibited us from proceeding the way we're proceeding today and later at the Committee of the Whole. Um, and it's a, it's a statement, I think, by the speaker that he recognized uh, the, the rights and obligations and uh, authorities of members of the council and has respected us in great way to allow us to keep the rules intact except what is absolutely necessary. And I'm grateful uh, to the speaker. I will be voting yes on this. Thank you, Councilman Yeager. I appreciate that statement. 
Thank you, Council Member Yeager. And I will begin with, as required by Rule 10.20, I ask for unanimous consent to adopt Council Member Koslowitz's motion to suspend and amend certain rules of the Council. Any member wishing to vote against Council Member Koslowitz's motion should raise their hand now in Zoom or object by saying no. Madam Majority Leader, there are no objections. Seeing none, the motion is adopted. I now recognize Speaker Corey Johnson. I would like to make a motion for a recess for about uh, one hour, it might be less, to allow the Committee of the Whole to meet. If the motion passes, we will stay in this Zoom conference and wait for the committee meeting to begin. We will then consider and vote on the items on the agenda for the Committee of the Whole. Then we will stay in the same Zoom conference and reconvene this stated meeting. Thank you, Speaker Corey Johnson. I would ask whether there is unanimous consent for this motion for a recess. Any member wishing to vote against the recess should raise their hand now in Zoom or object by saying so. Madam Majority Leader, there are no objections. Seeing none, the motion is adopted. We will take a recess to convene a meeting of the Committee on the Whole. The stated meeting of April 22nd, 2020 is now in recess. Mr. Speaker, you can now begin the Committee of the Whole meeting. Uh, good afternoon. The Committee of the Whole is now called to order pursuant to Rule 2.30 of the Rules of the City Council. In the Committee of the Whole, a simple majority is required to pass any item. Today, the Committee of the Whole will consider and vote on the following items. Introduction 1854, would make changes to the existing downtown Flushing Transit Hub bid in Councilmember Peter Coos district. The bid is requesting that the council approve the following changes to the district plan. First, extending existing bid boundaries. Second, expanding services to include beautification as well as traffic management and pedestrian safety and authorizing streetscape improvements to complement these services. And third, increasing the bid annual assessment from 380,000 to $1 million funded by the expansion to new properties and by changes in the method of assessment authorized to be calculated on a formula applicable to the class of the property. The city council has provided all required process under the administrative code this included a public hearing with testimony from the administration and the bids district management association and waiting the 30 day period for property owners affected by the proposed changes to formally object. Small business services attested that no property owners filed a valid objection with the city clerk. Council members may now vote in favor of intro 1854 if they can answer the following four questions in the affirmative. First, were all notices of hearing for all hearings required to be held, published and mailed as so required by law and otherwise sufficient? Second, does all the real property within the district's boundaries benefit from the establishment or expansion of the district except as otherwise provided by law? Third, is all real property benefited by the district included within the district? And lastly, is the establishment or expansion of the district in the best interests of the public? All council members have been sent a committee report with details about the proposed bid changes and the process that has taken place thus far. Based on the testimony we heard in support of this action, the written testimony we have received for today's hearing and the support of Councilmember Peter Koo 
in whose district the bid is located, the council may proceed with a vote on introduction 1854. In addition, the council will be voting on the following land use items in Article 11 property tax exemptions. 1898 Harrison Avenue in Council Member Cabrera's district would receive a full 40 year Article 11 exemption to preserve 54 units of affordable rental housing. Gray Senior Housing in Council Berlantzman's district would receive a full 40 year Article 11 exemption to preserve 80 units of affordable senior rental housing. HP Morningside Heights portfolio in the districts of council members Levine and Perkins would receive a partial 40 year article 11 property tax exemption to preserve 502 units of affordable rental housing. Turin House in Councilman Rosenthal's district would receive a full 40 year article 11 property tax exemption to preserve 189 units of affordable home ownership. Schreiber in Councilman Perkins's district would receive a partial 40 year article 11 property tax exemption to preserve 182 units of affordable rental housing. 757 East 169th Street in Chair Salamanca's district would receive a full 40 year article 11 property tax exemption to preserve 24 units of affordable home ownership. Howard Amron House in Councilmember Kalos's district would receive a partial 40 year Article 11 property tax exemption to preserve 11 units of affordable rental housing. Belmont Daniel and Councilmember Rose's district would receive a partial 40 year Article 11 property tax exemption to preserve 112 units of affordable rental housing. And the Manhattan Avenue apartments in Councilmember Levine's district would receive a partial 40 year Article 11 property tax exemption to preserve 81 units of affordable rental housing. Now on land use actions. 90 Sand Street, a project which would deliver 500 units of housing, many of those units for formerly homeless individuals in Councilmember Levin's district, a rezoning at 364 Avenue of the Americas in Councilmember Chin's district to legalize a gym, Rochester Sud Dam in Councilmember Cornegy and Amprey Samuels districts, a project which includes 78 affordable home ownership units, an Article 11 tax exemption at 272 East 7th Street in Councilmember Rivera's district for the preservation of 19 units, an extension of a ground lease at River Crossing Complex in Councilmember Ayala's district to preserve 147 units of affordable housing, two minor amendments to projects previously approved by the council, Cooper Square in Councilman Rivera's district and 461 Alabama Avenue in Councilman Barron's district, a change in a restrictive declaration on Gansevoort Street in the council district that I represent. And finally, we will vote to modify two projects and send them to the city planning commission for scope determinations. 52nd Street in Councilman Van Bramer's district and the Grand and Pacific Street rezoning in Majority Leader Cumbo's district. Will the clerk please call the roll for a vote on all of the items that I just listed to the members of the council. Before the clerk calls the roll, a point of parliamentary order. Mr. Speaker, I just wanted all members to know that the materials for all of the items that you've just spoken about were sent by email to the members. So all members have these materials in their email. Thank you parliamentarian and I ask the clerk to please call the roll in a vote on all of the items just listed. Adams. I vote aye on all. Amprey Samuel. Aye on all. Ayala. I vote aye. Barron. Permission to explain my vote. Yeah, but I think, Greg, you, you fixed it. Right. Council Member Mr. Barry, Speaker, now. Mr. Speaker, you can approve permission to explain a vote during Committee of the Whole. And permission is granted, Council Member Barron. It's nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. your time is starting now, Council Member Barron. Thank you. I just want to say I vote aye on all, 
And as regards the project in my district, 461, this is a technical adjustment. The project had been approved previously. And as you all know, it's designed for people who are living within 30, 40, 50%, 60% of the AMI. And they do again vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Barron. Borelli. I vote aye on all, everyone. Brannon. Aye on all. Cabrera. Aye on all. Chin. Aye on all. Cohen. Aye. Constantinidis. Uh, aye on all. Carnegie. A vote aye on all. Deutsch. And just if I can make a brief uh, mark. Mr. Yes. Speaker. Thank you. Yes. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Your time is starting oh. now. Thank you. So uh, before I vote, I just want to um, send my condolences to the families and friends of all those who passed away from COVID-19. And my prayers to all those who are still hospitalized and or are sick at, who, are, who are still sick at home. And I would like to just finally thank all the first responders and all the healthcare workers who are out there and all the members of the council who have been working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, on addressing issues pertaining to their constituents. So um, with that, I just want to vote by and all. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Deutsch. I know. Diaz. Council Member Diaz. Uh, he needs to be unmuted. I see him on the screen. Hold on one second, Councilmember Diaz. They need to unmute you. There are some technical difficulties with unmuting, unmuting Councilmember Diaz right now. Uh, no, no. So there we go. You're unmuted, Councilmember Diaz. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Before I vote, I. I wanna, uh, Councilmember Diaz, I want to wish you a happy birthday. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. And I would like to send my uh, soul, my uh, feedback about the death of my great friend, ex-council member, Noah Deal. So I would like to join the family and tell them that uh, we're sorry and that we, we knew him. He was a great man. And uh, saying that, I'm voting yes. Thank you, Councilman Diaz. Happy birthday. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Drum. Aye. Eugene. May I explain my vote? Yes, Council Member Eugene. Thank you very much. Uh, I just want to uh, express my, my, my thank and my gratitude to all the first responders, doctors, nurses, and medical professionals who uh, put their life in danger to save life in New York City at this very uh, difficult moment. And I would like also to express my deepest sympathy to all of those who lost or their loved one or their friends. And may God bless them and may God be with them and give them the comfort that they need. And I want to extend also my deepest sympathy to the parents of one of my staff members, uh, Emma, who also passed due to COVID-19. With that, I vote uh, yes and all. Thank you, Councilman Eugene. Gibson. I vote aye on all. Joe Nye. Aye on all. Gordenchik. Aye on all. Holden. Can you hear me? 
Yes, we can hear I you. Had a, yeah. I had my hand raised uh, before the vote. And I wanted to ask a question on uh, intro 1854. When were the, um, the, the property owners uh, polled uh, for their uh, approval or disapproval? I can't give you the date, but I can tell you that Council Member Koo supports it. It went through the entire process and Small Business Services attested to us that it went through the proper protocol and process. Uh, on the normal time frame. any of these uh, bid uh, projects go through when you are looking at furthering the boundaries. So that is what SBS has told us and attested to. And again, the local council member uh, supports this project. I can't give you the exact dates. I don't I have just, I was just concerned that if it was polled before the pandemic, before the emergency, that maybe some of them would have changed their minds, obviously, because they're closed and they're suffering. Uh, so anyway, um, uh, okay, I vote aye on all, but I would have liked to have- Bob, um, I want you to know, this is Jason. I just want you to know, we heard from the bid this morning so that's that's as up to date as the information that we have. So we did hear this morning. They are supportive. Okay, I and all. Mr. Thank Speaker, you. before we continue with additional council member votes, council member Yeager has raised his hand and would like to speak about the set of bills that we're voting on as the committee of the whole before sure. the vote continues. Sure, I apologize for not seeing council member Holden or council member Yeager's hand raised. I call on Councilmember Yeager uh, to make remarks about the bills that we're voting on today. Councilmember Yeager, your two minutes is starting now. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Before my two minutes clock begins, I, I'd like to rise for, or, or virtually rise for a point of parliamentary inquiry, if I may, with your permission, since you're chairing this committee. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, before the roll was called, the question was called, and it went straight to a roll call. The matter was not open for discussion and debate as required by our rules and by Roberts. Um, we went straight to a roll call and I, I appreciate that the hands were not seen, but uh, in a typical uh, setting, we would be able to speak into the mic and say, pardon me, Mr. Chair, uh, I wish to speak. And we were not afforded that opportunity. So I would ask that the, that the roll call be suspended, that the question be open for debate. Yes, I'm happy to do that. We're happy to suspend the roll call and open it up for debate. So if there are members besides you who would like to uh, have a discussion about the bills that we're voting on today, people can raise their hands and we can have that debate. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And to the extent that members had already voted, uh, they should be permitted to rescind their votes if necessary or to restart the roll from the beginning. Mr. Speaker, the, the, the motion that's in front of us, the question to vote on intro 1854 is uh, with respect to uh, hearings that were held in February of this year uh, and hearings that were held by the community board in 2019, uh, as my colleague stated long before the outbreak. Uh, just to be clear of what it is that we're voting, uh, there are currently 1,100 businesses in this bid. This bill would expand the boundaries of that bid uh, and to encompass an additional 900 new taxpayers. 30 seconds. All of whom, Mr. Speaker, as, as we discussed, this is not explaining a vote. This is a, a debate on the original question. So I would ask that the time be expended accordingly. Um, Mr. Speaker, the, the 900 new businesses that are being added into the bid are now going to receive a tax bill. Many of them are closed. They have been closed for the last several weeks they may never even reopen. Um, my suggestion is instead of voting on this question- Time expired. Today, have, Mr. Speaker, we have an opportunity to uh, continue uh, the <coughs> question particular bill by simply uh, postponing its question to a date later as allowed by our rules. <coughs> uh, and then in that regard, I would move right now uh, to postpone to a date later uh, specifically uh, to hear this in the first stated of November to give us some time to actually see if the atmosphere is correct and right to impose a new tax on businesses in Queens. Um, and under Rule 9.7 of the Council Rules, uh, this, the, this motion is not debatable, it's not required, <coughs> but it does supersede the debate on the original question and this motion would actually be heard first. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So I wanna call on Councilor Peter Koo. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Councilmember Koo, your time is starting now. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the bid was formed in 2003. Uh, we still have the original budget of $384,000. When it was formed, the minimum wage was $7 or less. Now the minimum wage is $15. So as you can see, the current budget is not uh, not uh, sustainable. That's why the B uh, wants to expand uh, the, uh, the the area to include more businesses uh, in the consideration. Uh, after this crisis is over, we will need uh, entity like BID to coordinate uh, the, how to revitalize the local businesses. Public-private partnership is really important. Uh, that's why BID is really, really important. Um, so I ask all my colleagues to support this. Uh, they have been doing research and uh, uh, for this expansion for the last two years. This is not something that just came out now. And the local businesses will understand the importance of having a collective leadership uh, and, uh, by bid, because bid can uh, help the business to do promotions, uh, to apply for grants, to do all the, all the things that individual, individual business owners cannot do. So I want to thank all my colleagues to support this bill. Please be understandable. This is a good- 30 bill. seconds. And I want to thank Council Member John and I'm all, all my colleagues. This is a very important bill. This is the time to support it, not afterwards. Thank you. Thank you. So we will vote on Council Member uh, Yeager's motion that this be put off. Uh, a yes vote would put this off on us being able to vote on it. A no vote would allow us to vote on the bill today. So I am going to ask Mr. the- uh, Mr. Speaker? Yes. Before calling the roll, Council Member Yeager has his hand raised. We already called on Council Member uh, Council Member I'm happy to call on you again, but I would like to vote on this motion. Made on this motion, I'd like to just speak one more time just to clarify some things. Uh, I, I did speak with Councilman Koo this morning and I have enormous amount of respect for the work he's done with this bid. I, I, again, I want to clarify that this is not uh, in reference to whether or not we like bids, we do. And it's not in reference to whether or not we don't think the bid should needs more money or resources. However, the things that the bid gets the money to do, it is not doing right now. Council in other words, it's not currently having traffic guards, et cetera, and beautification. We, we, we no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. You, made, you made your point before. Peter responded. I am calling a vote on your motion, which if you. You, if you vote yes on Councilman Yeager's motion, we will put this vote off. If you vote no on this motion, we will proceed with the vote today. So I'm asking the clerk to uh, suspend the previous roll call vote that we had and to go to a roll call vote Mr. Speaker, you're muted. Someone muted me, I didn't mute myself. Okay, so if you, uh, we're gonna suspend the roll call vote from before, and we're gonna go to a roll call vote on Councilman Yeager's motion. So I'm gonna ask the clerk to call the roll on Councilman Yeager's motion. Adam. Councilmember Adams? I voted, I vote no. You voted no, okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Ampri Samuel? No. Ayala? We did have a ticket. No. You can't, you can't um, I Baron? To briefly comment, Based on the fact that Jason said, as of today, uh, the comments from the bid were sustaining it, I vote no. Borelli. I vote aye on the motion. Thank you. Brennan. I vote aye. Cabrera. No. I vote no. Cohen. 
Uh, can I just briefly explain my vote? Yes. Your time will start just, now, Councilman McCollum. Thank you. I, I, I can just not think of anybody better uh, situated under these circumstances uh, to advise this body on whether or not we should proceed with the bid expansion other than my colleague, Peter Koo. Uh, so for that reason, I'm gonna vote no on the motion. Constantinidis. No. Carnegie. I vote no. Deutsch. Abstain. Diaz. Vote no. Drum. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Your time will start now, Council Member. This legislation was heard in my committee twice already, and people had ample time to come in and to participate in the decision making process. Therefore, I vote no. Eugene. No. Gibson. I vote no. Jonai. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Your time will start now, Council Member. Thank you. I clearly understand the issues in a small business chair. I am concerned for the small businesses uh, and what they're this crisis that they're going through. I also understand what my colleague raises as a point that this crisis was unforeseen and those small businesses could not uh, voice their opinion at this time before this vote is being heard. What I know is that we start planning so we open New York City back again. Bids are gonna be more important than ever to be a voice for those commercial corridors. And after speaking to my colleague that represents the area, as well as the other stakeholders, um, I vote no. Gordonchik. Uh, brief permission to explain my vote. Sure. Your time uh, will begin now, Council Member. Thank you. I won't take that long. Uh, I was in on the birth of the original bid um, uh, in 2002 and 2003. There is no community that needs a bid more desperately than downtown Flushing. Um, over 100,000 people a day are at uh, Roosevelt Avenue and Main Street, uh, and they create uh, a lot of activity. Uh, I understand the points taken by my colleague, uh, Councilman Yeager, but I also want to associate myself with uh, the remarks by uh, Councilman Joni um, in that I believe that the bids in the city will help to lead uh, the small business resurrection when that day, may it come soon, uh, comes that we are able to get out of our houses and our apartments and start to live uh, as New Yorkers have lived for generations. So with that, I vote no on this uh, motion. Holden. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Yes. Your time will start now, Councilman Mulholland. Thank you. Uh, again, I'm concerned about just the, it's a different world now. And uh, property owners will pay uh, more taxes in the future, it looks like. And with another bid piled on, I just want, I would like them to weigh in, not before the pandemic, I would like to hear from them now, because the world is different, their neighborhood is different, and their businesses are different. So. Uh, for that reason, I vote aye. Talos. No. King. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Your time uh, will you, start Mr. now, Councilmember King. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, Carmen Yeager, uh, Councilman Yeager brings some valid points to the table. Our world has changed as the district is trying to establish bids and understand the importance of bids in our small businesses. If this piece of legislation moves forward, I would recommend also that when this is the small business stimulus package comes down, that bids are li literally get funded to help those businesses that may disappear um, after this pandemic. With that all being said, I will vote. I will vote aye for this. Um, and uh, thank you, Cameron, and thank you, Peter Koo. Who? Hi, may I explain my vote, Mr. Speaker? Yes. Your council, council member, your time will start now. Thank you, my colleagues. I think this is the most important time is now to overcome our anxiety and panic. 
uh, once this crisis is over, we need more on, we need to depend more on BID uh, to support our local businesses. Because BID is an entity that will help promote um, coordinations between government and private uh, uh, entities, and also will promote tourism, promote uh, a lot of things. Uh, individually, indivi uh, all these business owners, because they are new immigrants, they don't know how to do it. They don't have a PR person. They don't have a, a, a public accounting person to help them apply grants. So it's important for us to support BID now because they are operating on a budget 13, I don't know, uh, 17 years ago. The budget is still the same. Now it's not sustainable. Everything, the minimum wage is double. Uh, every, uh, uh, the staff is uh, double. So they don't have enough uh, uh, resources to do it. The only thing they can help the business community is to expand and have more resources. In this in turn will help the local businesses. It takes money to make money. So they contribute a little bit of money, but the reward is much greater later. Thank you. I hope all my colleagues will support this. And 30 I will seconds. Vote, I will know on Jaeger's uh, bill. I hope uh, Council Member Jaeger will come visit uh, Foshan downtown before he misses uh, this uh, decision. Yeah. Thank you. Kozlowitz. I absolutely vote no. Lanceman. No. Lander. Oh, no. Levin. No. <clears throat> Levine. I vote no. Lewis. No. Mizell. No. Menchaka. <clears throat> uh, permission to explain? Yes. Your time will start now, Council Member. Thank you. Uh, I think that uh, my my vote was not going to be based on whether or not we need the bid to expand or or to to move forward. But I am compelled by the concept that our world has changed and information that is needed to make a decision like this uh, could be better discussed uh, in current times. So I'm gonna support this and I vote aye. And uh, it's making me think about some of the other things on the on the uh, calendar as well. So I hope we continue this healthier debate. Thank you all, I vote aye. Miller. Negative. Moya. Oh, no. Perkins. Aye. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Powers. No. Reynoso. No. Richards. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Yes. Your time will begin uh, now, Council I Member. support Peter Cool wholeheartedly and, and trust his judgment. And now is not the time to pit, to play petty politics. I vote uh, no. Rivera. No. Rodriguez. Hi, uh, no. Rose. No. Rosenthal. No. Salamanca. I vote no. Torres. I vote no. Traeger. No. Ulrich. I vote no. Valone. I vote no on the motion. Van Bramer. I vote no. Jaeger. 
I vote aye, and I would ask that the roll call on the original question be started from the beginning, given the superseding motion. Matthew. All right. Combo. I vote no. Speaker Johnson. I vote no. I ask the clerk for the tally on the vote on the motion. By vote of seven in the affirmative, 42 in the negative, and one abstention, motion has been defeated. Thank you. I ask for a restart of the roll call vote on all of the items that I mentioned that we're voting on as the committee on the whole today. So if we could start with Councilmember Adams again and re-begin the roll call on all of the items on our <clears throat> calendar. Mr. Speaker, before we begin the vote as a point of parliamentary order, just as with a vote on general orders, for any member who wishes to vote no on any of the individual items that are being voted on for the committee of the whole, please state which items you wish to vote no on. Thank you. And I ask the clerk for a roll call vote. Adams. I still vote aye on all. And Bree Samuel. Aye on all. I'm going to put it in the chat. And, yeah, so we can do it later. Ayala. Aye on all. Darren. I vote aye. And as I said before, this project is an adjustment for housing that will be designed for people who are 30, 40, 50, and 60% of the AMI. Thank you. Borelli. I vote aye on all. Brandon. I vote aye on all. Cabrera. Aye on all. Chin. I vote aye on all. Cohen. Aye on all. Constantinidis. Uh, and I am so glad to be here to cast this vote because I have been sick for the last 24 days and my wife has been sick for just about the same amount of time with COVID. So I am so glad to be here to be able to cast an eye on all vote. So glad you're feeling better, Costa. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Carnegie. Uh, I vote aye on all. Deutsch. I know. Diaz. I know. Drum. I. Eugene. I. Gibson. I vote I on all. Jonai. I on all. Gordenchik. I and all. Holden. I and all. Kalos. I and all. King. I and all. Ku. I and all. Kozlowitz. I on all. Lanceman. Yes. Lander. I. Levin. I. Levine. I vote I on all. Lewis. I on all. Mizell. Yes. Menchaca. I vote. I have permission to explain my vote. Yes. Your Thank time you. will start now, Councilmember Menchaca. Thank you so much. Uh, before I, I give my vote, I, I just want to say how um, 
how much the council is trying really hard to bring out the stated meeting into into your living room. So I'm I'm really speaking right now to everyone who's watching us. Oh my God, to our democracy. And so the the work that I want to do here is really ensure that we as a community engage all these questions. There are 16 land use items. And what I wanna really do is ensure that everyone has access to this information. And so I wanna thank anyone who's watching right now. This is important, um, not only important for the council to keep doing this work, but for you to engage. Our best will only be as best as your engagement on the ground. Uh, and so uh, with that, I'm gonna say yes and I to all of the items on the list of, uh, on, the, on the roll call today. And thank you. Thank you. Miller. Affirmative. Coming up, affirmative. Mm -hmm. Moya. Aye. Perkins. Affirmative. Powers. Aye. Reynoso. Aye. Richards. Uh, proud to uh, vote aye. And let me just say, Queens knows how to lead the way. And I trust uh, my colleague, uh, Council Member Ku, and to my, count, my colleagues, uh, Costa and Barry, uh, thank you for your leadership. Uh, you've actually gone through something. So keep the petty politics out of this. Thank you, I vote aye. Rivera. With a thank you to my colleagues for East 7th Street and Cooper Square, I vote aye. Rodriguez. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Council Member, your time it, is starting now. I know that for many individuals, uh, many New Yorkers, they will be you know, looking at us on how we had the determination that 